fellow Catonians. I'm Pastor Carl Lewis from Faith Fellowship in Durbanville North. With the coronavirus increasing in such an alarming rate here in Cape Town, I thought I would bring you a message from God's Word, from the manual that God has given to us on how to deal with anxiety. Because I'm sure that there are many of you who are anxious, anxious about whether you will catch this coronavirus or not, anxious about maybe loved ones that have already caught this virus, anxious about your work, about the security of your job, anxious about losing your job, losing uh, your work, and uh, not knowing how to feed your family, not knowing how to go forward. Now the Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippian believers after being imprisoned himself for preaching the gospel. He wrote the Philippian believers who were really anxious about their own lives, about what would happen to them as believers in Jesus Christ. Now for believers in Jesus Christ, God has written in his manual for us on how to live our lives today, a passage which teaches us how to deal with anxiety. In the letter to the Philippians in chapter 4, the Apostle Paul wrote a six-step recipe. And as you follow this recipe, it's certainly going to help alleviate your anxiety. The first step in the recipe is in verse 4, where he writes there, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Now, as a believer in Jesus Christ, he's not asking you to rejoice in the circumstances that you find yourself in, that we all find ourselves in today. And having just read now that the first 10 uh, patients have been admitted to the CTICC Hospital of Hope, uh, it's a daunting thing that we are facing right now. But notice that he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The Apostle Paul was writing to these believers, and that's what we ought to be doing. And that's the first step in this recipe, to rejoice in the Lord. You see, for a believer in Jesus Christ, we can rejoice in the Lord because of his salvation, because he came down from heaven to earth, God who took on human flesh, and who lived a perfect sinless life on this earth, experiencing all the attacks of the devil, experiencing all the weaknesses that we face in our lives. Yet he was without sin, and he gave his life to pay the penalty for our sins on the cross at Calvary. And as he died on the cross that day, some 2,000 years ago, he shed his precious blood, to pay for the penalty of the sin of mankind. He was buried, but he rose again on the third day. And that single fact gives us cause to rejoice. And he has ascended into heaven, and he has said that all who believe in him, in him alone for salvation, will be saved. Also, we know that we can rejoice because he has given us the Spirit of God. He has indwelt us who indwells us, lives within us, and enables us to live the Christian life today. As we read the Word, as we trust the Word, as we obey His Word, He fills us with joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and all these wonderful fruits, and enables us to live a life that is pleasing to our God and Savior. Also, there are precious and magnificent promises in the Bible. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he dwells within us in the person of the Holy Spirit, Christ in us, which gives us a hope for what is to come. He has said he's gone ahead to prepare a place for us and that our hearts ought not to be troubled. He has gone to prepare a place and he will come again and fetch us so that we may be where he is. Just think about that. One day we'll be in his presence in heaven, in a place where there is no more sickness. There is no more death. 
there is no more sin or the effects of sin or no more effect of the curse upon this world. Oh, my friends, we have much to rejoice in because Jesus actually said he could come back and he will come back at any given moment. There is nothing stopping him coming. So we look forward to the fact that Jesus may come at any moment and take us off this earth to be with him forever in an event called the rapture. Also, we can look forward to the day when he will come and he will destroy this earth with fire and create a new heaven and a new earth in which we will live one day. Revelation chapter 1, 21 and chapter 22 describe this glorious place as a golden city that we will live in, in the very presence of our God and Savior. And I could go on, and I could go on the whole night. And uh, so Paul says, focus on the Lord. Take your focus off what's making you anxious. Right now, pause and think about the Lord and rejoice in Him. And he says, again, I will say, rejoice in Him. Step two of this wonderful recipe is, he says, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. You see, He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, we can calm down. We can be gentle. And that's what rejoicing will do for you. As you rehearse what He's done for you, as you think about the wonderful Savior that He is and all that He's done, we'll find ourselves that we are calming down. Now, gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit of God. And what a wonderful fruit that is, that even in the midst of the storm that's going on around us, we can be gentle, we can be calm, and know that the Lord is indeed with us. Step three says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. You see, because He's near, we can talk to Him. And we ought to spend time in prayer, talking to the Lord. But notice He also says, bring your supplications. Now that's a wonderful word, supplications. It means bring those things that you can do nothing about to the Lord in prayer. In other words, talk to Him about what is making you anxious. Talk to Him about this coronavirus pandemic. Talk to him about the fact that this is on the increase in Cape Town and it's growing faster than we can believe. Talk to him about these things. Talk to him about your work, about your family, about those that have the coronavirus. Talk to him about your goals in life that are now on pause and you, you don't even know if this will come back to normal. I mean, what is normal? We don't even know what normal is anymore and whether or not we will return to what we once knew. Talk to the Lord. Supplicate Him. Bring your supplications, those requests to God about which you can do nothing. And look what it says He will do for us. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He will give you peace. A wonderful fruit of the Holy Spirit. Another fruit. We have gentleness. And now we have um, peace. Starts off in rejoicing. You'll find that you have the joy of the Lord in doing that. So we have joy. We have um, peace now and gentleness. The peace of God surpasses all comprehension. You don't know where it comes from. You can't describe it fully because it's personal. It's related to you. And God will give you His perfect peace so that your heart and mind can be guarded in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the rock on which we stand as believers. And we can stand on this rock. And having built a house upon the rock, when the storms about us come and the storms of coronavirus come and are crashing against this, against this uh, edifice that we're standing on, on, we are standing on the rock. And our house will stand. This house, which is the temple of the living God, of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus Christ, will stand. 
the storms that assail us. Oh, my friends, what a wonderful thing it is to have your heart and your mind fixed on the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. The next step, he says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. In other words, now that you've started rejoicing in the Lord and you're continuing to rejoice in Him, you've calmed down, you've begun to pray to Him, you've brought your supplications to Him, you've received His peace. He says, now don't go back and pick up those anxious thoughts again, but continue to think on Jesus Christ, for He is all these things. He's true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is absolute truth. He is honorable. There is none more honorable than Him. He is right. He is absolutely righteous. He is pure. There is no sin in Him. He is altogether lovely. Whatever is of good repute, good things that you can say about Him, He gave His own testimony that he loves everybody and he's laying down his life for those who will come to him so that he can give them the free gift of salvation, which is really giving himself to us. He's excellent, absolutely morally pure. And then he says, if there's anything else that you can think of worthy of praise for God, who loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Ah, oh, what a wonderful thing to say, dwell on those things. Rather think about those things. Think on the Lord and what He is doing for you in your life. And then the last step in this recipe, number six, he says, the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. You see, what was Paul doing? Paul was a prisoner, but he wasn't bemoaning the fact that he was in prison. He wasn't being eaten up by anxiety while being in prison. Rather, he was sharing the gospel, as we read in the first chapter of Philippians, sharing the gospel with the prisoners, with the prison guard, and some of them were getting saved. And then he was sat down to write a letter to encourage those outside to remain steadfast in Jesus Christ. And so he's asking you to do the same. He's asking us to do the same. And really, that is why I'm busy recording this video. Not something that comes naturally to me, but that so I can encourage you. And so what can you do to encourage somebody else? I think one of the best things that you could possibly do is either to introduce them to Jesus Christ and tell them how you got saved and how they too can come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And then open the manual, the book of life, the Bible, and teach them from passages how they can deal with their anxieties. And perhaps you can pray for them and help them to understand that they too can pray and bring their supplications to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the verse that I mentioned earlier in John chapter 3 verse 16 really encapsulates the gospel, the fact that God loves you. God loves you. Yes, there is sin in the world. Yes, there is a curse on this world. Yes, there is the prince of the power of the air who is controlling this world, but he's also trying to blind people to the fact that God is still trying to save mankind so that one day 
we may be with him in his heaven and not have to face the judgment for our sin. Sin is rebellion against God. And Adam brought sin into the world when he believed the lie of the devil. And so we're all born out of Adam. And we all have a sin nature. And the Bible says that everyone has sinned in the world against God, rebelled against God, and not lived according to his way. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross at Calvary to pay the penalty for the sins of the world, the sin of mankind, so that we would not have to face the judgment of God. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, whoever, that's you, that's anybody that you know, whoever believes in him shall not perish, perish, die in the judgment, but have everlasting life. My friend, have you ever taken time to consider your own eternal destiny and ask yourself, what if you catch this coronavirus? Where will you go if you have to die from it? Do you know? The Bible says if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and believe that he died for you on the cross at Calvary, personally died for you, was buried and rose again from the dead, if you believe that, the gospel, the good news, that your sin has been taken care of by Jesus Christ. If you believe that, put your faith in that, you shall be saved. The Bible says that if you can confess that with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray that this may be true of you and that you will be able to follow this six-step recipe in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9 and be able to rejoice in the Lord always and have his peace. May the Lord bless you even this evening in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening.